And thank you for joining us. You're listening to the Beyond 50 radio program. I'm your host, Daniel Davis. Joining us here on the program today is Professor Brian Peskin. We're going to be talking about the hidden story of cancer. You know, it wasn't so long ago that cancer was one of those rare occurrences. In fact, it was so rare that it was almost non-existent. Why is it that we live in a society today that it seems that it's rampant and going everywhere? It's really literally an epidemic. I'd like to join on our program today our guest, Professor Brian Peskin, and we're going to talk about the hidden story of cancer. Professor Brian Peskin, how are you doing today? Hey, great, Daniel. Thanks for having Very me. Very good. Now, I know that you have lit, written a landmark book. We've had you on our program before, The Hidden Story of Cancer. It has the medical community in awe. What is hidden? Well, it's Nobel Prize winner Otto Warburg, MD, PhD, the greatest biochemist and physiologist of the 20th century's seminal discoveries concerning cancer. Very hidden and under-publicized, Daniel. Mm-hmm. Now, let's talk about why that is. I mean, here you've got this war on cancer, American Cancer Society associations, yeah. walk for the cure, run for the cure, all this money that's being raised, but yet we it seems cancer is getting more prevalent. It absolutely is. I live in Houston, Texas. Their results are deplorable, given 30, 35 years compared to other fields, such as electronics. We can put a man on the moon. We can put a million transistors in a square centimeter, but they're getting absolutely nowhere with trillions of dollars in cancer. And Otto Warburg's discovery was 35% sustained decrease in oxygen levels to the tissue, the cellular oxygen decrease, not in the bloodstream, automatic cancer. You don't feel it. You didn't know it's there. The great news is it takes a long time to get to this level and give yourself cancer. The bad news is every commercial product has oxygen-deficient oils, typically the parent omega-6. So all the oils in the supermarket are getting into the cell membranes, Daniel, and giving everybody cancer. Hmm, that's interesting. Now, having known, that, yeah, having known that there was a discovery of, of curing cancer by, as you said, Dr. Otto War- Warburg, uh, why don't medical schools and research hospitals make use of this information? The biggest problem was he was a German Jew under the protection of Hitler. Both Warburg and Hitler had relatives that died of cancer, so Hitler was petrified. So here we have a Jew getting full protection. His laboratory was running. He had no problems at all. And all of the Jewish scientists in America hated this of course they would do anything to discredit him so you had awful and awful things that they did and in my book the hidden story of cancer i go through and give a lot of the negative results that they did and the crazy things they did to discredit him but it didn't even matter because back then daniel no one had the practical way to solve the decreased oxygenation problem today we do but his work was put on the shelf and never taken off a very big tragedy. No one even knows his name anymore. When I speak to the oncologists in Houston at MD Anderson Cancer Hospital, biggest cancer center in the world, the oncologists just look at me in their mouth drops. They don't even know his name, which is deplorable. And without this seminal discovery, they will continue to get nowhere in their, quote, fight on cancer. They can run, walk, do whatever it is. This is fundamental. There is one prime cause of cancer, lack of oxygen to the cell, Everything else is what's called a secondary cause, Mm -hmm. meaning if you smoke, it decreases oxygen. Why? Because it inflames everything. If you have asbestos, the same thing. If you ingest cyanide, the same thing. It all decreases oxygen, and this is the problem. So there is one prime cause. They say there's hundreds of causes, and this is why they get nowhere. There's Mm -hmm. hundreds of causes of a disease, Daniel. How would you ever expect them to get it? There isn't. No disease has hundreds of causes, but there's always one direct cause. So this is ridiculous where they're starting, and it's beyond deplorable where they are today because the results are no better than 30 years ago, 1% or 2%. Given 30 years, infinite money, they should be embarrassed. You know, I was going to tell you, uh, Professor Brian uh, Peskin, is that uh, just recently we had Suzanne Summers on our program, and she has Mm -hmm. a book out that's called Knockout. Yep, I'm familiar with it. What's that? I'm familiar with it. Okay, very good. As a matter of fact, uh, we made her familiar with you. 
<laughs> interestingly thank enough. Thank you. And yeah, what it was, as, as far as I know, she wasn't. So thank you. Yeah. Uh, now <clears throat> she was on Larry King, and she had two of the doctors that she had uh, outlined in her book. Yes, I saw <clears throat> that, that actually helped her, you know, fight the cancer. And then apparently there were two other doctors that were brought on the program to refute all this evidence at the same time. And she just turned, and just like what you're saying right now, she says, look, you guys have spent billions of dollars trying to research a cure for cancer, and you really haven't gotten anywhere. These guys here are getting results. Isn't, shouldn't that be the issue right here? That's the only issue, real-life results. And if you look at all the 1990 onward cancer oncology publications, the more virulent the cancer, the worse it is, the more it metastasizes, all directly tied to decreased oxygen levels. Mm -hmm. Even the chemotherapy, Daniel, the worse the cancer is, meaning the more oxygen deficient you are, the less effective the chemotherapy. Why? Because it wants oxygen to work. So this is why the second time cancer comes back, you're dead. Mm -hmm. The chemotherapy won't work. The radiation won't work. So the answer is here today. More parent omega-6 and omega-3 is what's needed. I know what you're thinking, but everybody says we're overdosed on parent omega-6. You know, the omega-6 from the cooking oils. We are, but the fundamental mistake everybody in the field has made, Daniel, is they're not looking at how much of that omega-6 we eat is adulterated. And most of it is, the proof is, any of the cooking oil in the supermarket is all omega-6, has no smell, no taste, can't go bad because you can't have bagels or cereal smelling like fish that's gone bad, so they turn it into a trans fat, hydrogenated oil, whatever the mechanism, they have to stop the oxygen transfer. Why do you care? Because you have 100 trillion cells that have a preponderance of parent omega-6 in them. When you figure it out based on the physiology of tissue, the body needs 11 times more parent omega-6 than parent omega-3. All the word parent means is that's fundamental. So you have parent omega-6 and parent omega-3. DHA and EPA from fish oil are derivatives. Your body makes these as needed, and it makes very little of them. So anybody taking fish oil is overdosing, pharmacological overdose, Daniel, on the wrong stuff. You're not helping yourself at all. So it's a very exciting discovery. Uh, I have colleagues all around the world now utilizing my discovery, and their results are even better than they had even in existing cancer patients. If you don't solve this problem, Daniel, of increasing the oxygenation, it's always going to come back. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, tell us, uh, Professor Peskin, so this sounds like it's being accepted and embraced worldwide. How is it, uh, what are the results here in the United States? Phenomenal. When the oncology physicians <laughs> integrate my PEO recommendations compared to their fish oil or whatever they've been doing, the results skyrocket. And I'm all about prevention, Daniel. Mm -hmm. So if you put the right parent essential oils into the system, you oxygenate, your risk of cancer goes down to next to nothing. I honestly don't know how you'd get it outside of walking through a radiation field or ingesting a carcinogen all over the place. But outside of that, which hopefully nobody's doing anyway, you're not going to get it. And I beg everybody to invest in the hidden story of cancer it is the most highly accoladed book on a medical discovery by physicians, physician MD, PhD, more than any other book in America ever. And they could pull it up on my website, brianpeskin.com, my name, and check out the accolades. And if these physicians say this, take it to the bank. They know more than the average person. And I solve a problem for them. I put the solution together for them, too, because they didn't know either. So it's very gratifying. Well, it should be, too. Well, thank you very much for being here on the program. Go ahead and give your website out again one more time. Sure, Daniel. It's Brian Peskin, my name, dot com. That's B as in boy, R-I-A-N, P as in park, E-S-K-I-N, dot com. All kinds of papers there. I've been peer-reviewed, published. This is rock-solid, state-of-the-art science, Daniel, that everybody needs if they don't want cancer. And it turns out, Protects against heart disease, too. You'll be shocked. Well, thank you again, Professor Brian Peskin, for being on our program today. The book is The Hidden Story of Cancer. I'm Daniel Davis. Thank you for tuning in. This is the Beyond 50 radio program. Remember, live your day past halfway.